Sardacy and the informer, Andy Anderson. That is absolutely correct, Paul Rumpus. And as you gestured to, if you guys want to look as cool as I do, I do. You do. Excellent. You can head over to Wrestler Merch right now and get this t shirt of the event. And what an event we have. For the first time ever, four championship matches, Andy Anderson. Four. <laughs> The first of which is going to be Matt Hayter defending against Havoc! And we have a huge triple threat in our main event for the RCW Emerald Crown, the Duke, Katie Trey. We'll put his title on the line against the champ champ, Nick Armstrong. The Viking Grim! Oh, uh, indeed. Well, of course, we've got the normal rules. We like to make RCW a family friendly, safe place to be. So, no racism, no sexism, no homophobia, no intolerance of any sort. You know what not to be. So, I reckon we hand over to Andy Anderson and we get this show on the road! of Australian wrestling, Paul Roberts, along with the historian, Angus R. Dacey. What a big show we've got tonight, Angus. Huge event, Paul Roberts. Strike first, strike hard, right here, live at the top of the arc in the Arkabar Hotel. And look who is coming to the ring. You were bloody yourself, Caden Cornell. Big challenge on his hands here tonight, Angus. Well, look, when this match was announced, it's, it's you know, it was announced on the socials earlier this week. I was very excited for this one. I've been watching this young man, Caden Cornell, ever since he started his career. He's shown some promise so far. Let's see what he can do here tonight. Well, big opportunity. Uh, he's improved immensely over the last few months, uh, Angus. So, opportunity against. The man himself, the man that helped train Caden Cornell, of course, Chris Vasso, the world class one himself, will get to test out the skills. Yes, yeah, real student versus teacher kind of matchup we're about to enter into here. He's very, very excited to see what Caden Cornell can do. Right, here comes the world class one himself. And his opponent. Oh, there it is, the familiar music hall. Wonder if you'll bring Hayter with him. Well, one half of the world class egos, of course, Chris Basso, Matt Hayter, they are life partners. And oh, look at this, a bit of a new hairstyle from Chris Basso tonight. Well, he's all ready for action here at the top of the arc against Caden Cornell, the pure blood. Uh, but no Matt Hayter, but look, Matt Hayter's obviously got bigger things to deal with later on. The, the big rematch is going to happen tonight later on, Angus. Huge rematch there for the Riot City Wrestling Championship. Matt Hayter will be defending against Havoc. And look, maybe Chris Basso will come out with Matt Hayter for that one. That is a, a, a main event in any arena around the country. I am looking forward to that one. But look, let's not look past this no. one. It's so good Absolutely. every time Chris Basso comes to the ring. You know, he's, he's in fewer singles matches these days than he used to be. 
but every time he comes out to wrestle, it's always a very, very special event. Well, he had a, uh, a good go in the C4 Grand Prix tournament for the Emerald Crown, unfortunately unsuccessful in that one. Oh, hold on a sec, Chris Basso, looks like he will race us with a few words here, Paul Roberts. Oh, well, this is always exciting. Let's have a listen to what Chris Basso has to say. Look, I just want to take a quick second because it's been a hot minute since I've been in an RCW ring. It's been a couple of months and I feel pretty good to be back. And obviously a couple of things have changed around here which I've really noticed. And most importantly, don't you forget this, is that I now have a ponytail. Ooh, oh, hold on a second. Are you serious, Chris Basso? Are you worried about? Hey! Don't you dare disrespect the Prince Basso. Hey! Don't you dare disrespect the Prince Don't you dare disrespect the Prince Basso. When I've got the microphone, you all sit down and shut up. Shut up! You dickhead! Now, Chris, if you actually paid any attention to what's going on around here, and weren't too busy being haters' towel boy, what? you would notice that I am one of the premier up and comers here in the Don't you laugh at me, shut your mouth, you whack! Oh, 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 oh. And you will take me seriously, because I know you're not taking oh. me seriously. take you seriously. You think that I'm not taking you seriously? You don't think that I take every single fight seriously? Oh that you've got rocks in your head. I think you're good. In fact, I think you could be one of the best. I think you're really, really good. I think that you've just been taught some wrong things by some really, really shitty people along the way. Now, ponytail or not, if it's alright with you, I'd like to have a bit of a wrestle now. Is that okay? Oh, is that all right? I would love to have a wrestle. Oh, you'd like to have a wrestle, would you? Yes, I would. Okay, Cornel, let's have a wrestle, everyone. Oh, should we have a wrestle? Yes, let's have a wrestle. Oh, well, let's put the microphone down there, all right? All right, let's go. I want to see a wrestle. Come on. Well, of course, but big um, kudos from Chris Basso to, to Kate and Cornell there. Yeah, it would be a huge mistake for Chris Basso to not take Kate and Cornell seriously, as he just said. You've got to take every opponent seriously. You've got to prepare for every match, and Chris Basso obviously... Obviously not uh, discounting Caden Cornell here tonight. Well, senior referee Nick Savage removing the microphone from the ring so we can get the, the wrestling underway. Exactly. I fear if the microphone stayed in the ring, this match would never begin. And Chris Basso now just uh, warming up. And he's not ready. He's taking his time. He's taking his time. And... Here we go, first match of the evening, Paul Roberts. Student versus teacher, world class versus the pure They lock it up, Caden Cornell trying to show that pure wrestling skill. Oh, but Chris Basso quickly reverses it into that side headlock himself. Into the side headlock. Now look for Chris Basso and Caden Cornell to exchange some, uh, some holds here in the early offset of this match. I'm very curious to see exactly how Chris Basso approaches this. This is, of course, as we said, a student versus teacher match. Chris Basso trained Caden Cornell in the RCW Academy. But Paul, as the old adage goes, Chris Basso taught Caden Cornell everything he knows, but he didn't teach him everything Chris Basso knows. Oh, absolutely, and that's a vast, vast uh, knowledge there that you're taking on with the world-class Chris Basso. That's right, of course, uh, Chris Basso just celebrated 20 years as a pro wrestler. Caden Cornell uh, turned pro. Oh, there we go, huge leg lariat. Caden Cornell turned pro about three years ago, so a bit of an experience gap there, I would say. Ah, but look, hey, as, as we've pointed out, Caden Cornell doing very well in those three years, and especially the last six months or so, has improved his skill immensely. But uh, there he is, getting snapped over. Ooh! And the Double chop from Chris Basso. We know all about the, the Basso chops. Oh, what do we know about the Basso European uppercuts? Right to the back of the head. Right to the back of the head and only a one count, says referee Nick Savage. Yeah, as, as, as you said, Caden Cornell has improved a lot. He, he used to run with a, a pretty 
dodgy crew back in the day, and now he's taken to more singles action. Let's see if that pays off for him, but right now eating those those left hands of Chris Basso. Right on the jaw of Caden Cornell, measuring each one time for a bit of... Uh, the shucking and jiving, perhaps. Yeah. Look at him go. Chris Basso's oh, still going. We're at the top of the arc, Angus. It, it is a disco. Yet. Oh, whoa, hold on a sec. Oh, hot shot. On to the top rope, right across the throat there. He just hangs him out to dry on that top rope. But think, another two count, says referee Nick Savage. Aiden Cornell quickly back on the attacks, stomping right in the middle of the back of Chris Basso. He's going to have to pull out every trick he can tonight if he want, wants to have any success over Chris Basso here tonight. Yeah, Chris Basso, multi-time Riot City Wrestling Champion. In fact, just coming off a big win back. Oh, hold on a sec. Snapmare. Right there. No. Oh, into the cover. Two count. Yeah, Chris Basso coming off a big win against Nick Armstrong at Super Clash 4 back at the Fringe. We haven't seen him in an RCW ring since then. That was a couple months ago now. Wow. Yeah, that long. Yeah, that was back in, back in March. Now we're well and truly into May. So look at this. Here we go. Is that, a, is that a rear naked choke or is that just a... Uh, referee Nick Savage is close enough, keeping an eye on it. Here comes Chris Basso now trying to get those shots into the midsection of Caden Cornell. Ooh, separation gained and now some strikes in the corner. Oh, just lighting up the chest of Caden Cornell. Here we go. Sends him off the ropes. Cornell tries to reverse but quickly turned around by uh, world class. That back heel kick there. Hold on a sec. Whoa. Oh, what was that? He just dropped him on his head. Exploder suplex. The cover now. Two. Oh, Ooh, that was close. Certainly a lot closer for Kate and Cornell on that occasion. But, well, of course you're going to get close when you drop a guy on his head. Oh, that, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I wouldn't want to wake up in the morning after feeling that. And Caden Cornell now, the momentum is on his side. That is the closest near fall of the match so far. And just Caden Cornell now taking control of Chris Basso. Gets Basso up against the ropes, tries for a chop of his own. Hey, I thought they taught chop classes in Chris Basso's uh, trainings. I guess not. I guess Caden Cornell didn't go to that one. Oh, that was did, did you see he turn up in his limo earlier today here at the Ark? I saw that. I saw that. Doesn't he just doesn't he have any self-respect? Seriously, Caden Cornell. Daddy's money and all that, but here we go now, whipping Chris Basso off the ropes and a chop. Big chop follows Huge up with another one. Chops at the top of the head of Kate Cornell, ducks underneath. Big neck breaker. Chops to the top of the head at the top of the arc, and now Chris Basso, he is feeling it. That's the experience of the of the master of the teacher. Ooh, big knee there. Huge knee. Chris Basso now follows up. Is he thinking Sega Mega Driver? Well, if he can nail this, that'll be the end of Caden Cornell trying to get him up. Ooh, he can't quite get Caden Cornell up, no. Oh! Big strike there. Right to the, oh, the neck and the chin. Well, Cornell, some serious forearms to uh, Basso. What a mean streak we are seeing from Cornell here. Oh, but he got caught there with a the big roundhouse. What's Chris Basso thinking now? Gets him up. Oh, big sit down powerbomb. Sit down powerbomb, is that enough? No. Oh, just two. Another two count, says referee Nick so. Yeah, of course, Chris Basso, you know, this is we're heading into some deep waters here. Do you think he's a little bit impressed with the fact that Caden Cornell has withstood this offense so far? Oh, he's got to be happy with the effort of Caden Cornell, as we said. Obviously, Chris Basso, one of the, the big influences of, of Caden Cornell's pro wrestling career, to, to be able to go with him toe-to-toe -to -toe in the ring here at the top of the arc, and, and with handle those chops. Oh, jeez. Man, I, I, I would You've got to be a bit happy. Look, sometimes I think I'd like to be Caden Cornell because of all the money he's got. But in situations like this, I do not want to be Caden Cornell. Right now, you don't want to be Caden Cornell. Not right now. And Chris Basso. Oh, oh, he gets caught with a knee. Wow. Cornell outsmarting Basso on that occasion. That is interesting. Now he's got him hooked up in the ropes. I don't know if Chris Basso expected to be in this position tonight. Oh. Big European uppercut. Certainly starting to uh, stagger the world-class Chris Basso. Oh, look at that rope hunt oh. DDT. That's the second time he's dropped him on his head here tonight. Well, look, I've seen... Oh, that's a two count. I've seen Caden Cornell use that, that high-angle back suplex 
to put opponents away. And that attacks the head and the neck area. And you can just see, I think he's got a game plan. Caden Cornell has a plan tonight. What, keep dropping him on his head till he doesn't get up anymore? Yeah, and I think it's working. Well, it could be. Chris Basso slowly trying to get to his feet here at the top of the arc. Oh, here we go. There's that high angle back suplex. Oh, no. Gets caught. Oh, straight into that knee. That could rock Caden Cornell. Scrambles the brains of Caden Cornell. But charging into the corner now. Cornell able to clear that one quickly and gets Basso back up in the corner. Chris Basso now is placed on the top rope. We don't really see Caden Cornell go up here very often. What is he thinking? What is, what's he got going through his mind here? Oh, right to the top. Oh, hold on a sec. What is he? What? Oh, 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 oh. Oh, the strength of Chris Basso, world class, has him up on the shoulders. Where's he going with him now? Oh, oh. right on the top rope there. Whoa. We've seen Chris Basso do that before. Vintage Chris Basso. What is he thinking to follow this up with? Oh, if he gets the, the Mega Driver. Oh, he hits it. The Sega Mega Driver. Into the cover. One, two, three. That's a Oh, huge win for Chris Basso here tonight. Well, there we have it. Successful here tonight. The master, the teacher over the student. Chris Basso successful here at the top of the arc for strike first, strike hard against the pure blood, Caden Cornell. Look, take nothing away from Caden Cornell in that match. He put on a fight. He took it to Chris Basso, coming up short tonight. But look, when you're in the ring with world class, you're going to have to put on the fight of your life to win. Don't pick on the fact that Caden Cornell is a bit short. I won't tell him that you said that he was a bit short. Oh, look, but look, <laughs> I have nothing to do with the height. Nothing to do with the height, but Chris Basso, yeah. truly a world-class talent. But look, props to you, Caden Cornell. Oh, absolutely. Tonight but was not your night, but I'm looking forward to seeing what you can do in the future. Keep fighting, man. And look, you see what Caden Cornell does. Absolutely, Cornell, great showing there against Chris Basso. But let's take it back up to Andy Anderson. The following match is scheduled for one fall, one fall. with a 60-minute time limit, and it's for the Riot City Wrestling Women's Championship! Oh, here we go, Angus. We haven't seen this for a while. This is the first championship match of the evening. At the offset, I said we'd have four title matches, the first time ever. And here we go with the RCW Women's Championship. Chanel Phoenix making her way to the ring, making her RCW debut as well. And what a way to make your debut in a championship match here at Riot City Wrestling. Of course, this was an open challenge put out by Savannah Summers, initially ans answered by Asia, who unfortunately due to injury could not compete, which left the door wide open, the forbidden door some might say, for Chanel Phoenix to come walking through. Well, I, I follow Chanel on the social media, Angus, and uh, she has worked very hard at improving herself, her body, her everything to bring her to where she is now. And it's going to be one hell of an opponent for Savannah Summers. And speaking of Savannah Summers, here comes the women's champion. Longest reigning combined total reigns of uh, any women's champion in the history of Riot City Wrestling. History or, of Australian wrestling. Well, yeah, even that. She is a four-time RCW women's champion. Former uh, war, uh, current Warzone Women's Champion, and she just won the Power Slam Women's Championship. So she is very, very decorated when it comes to that. Uh, absolutely, and she, she's held all sorts of titles all over this country. Savannah Summers has done it all. We've talked about it a million times. She was the only woman, only female wrestler in RCW at the start, and used to have to wrestle the guys all the first. time. Oh, here we go for the actual Standing official. To my right. From Melbourne, Victoria, representing Absolute MMA, the Alpha Chanel Phoenix! And her opponent, standing to my left, the First Lady of Riot City, the reigning, defending Riot City! Wrestling Women's Champion, the Princess of Perfection, Savannah Summers! Well, as I said, she's 
is going to have her hands full here tonight with Chanel Phoenix. This is going to be uh, a very, very interesting matchup. Uh, but no one uh, out to help Savannah Summers tonight. No, no backup. Now, the interesting thing about this, this is actually a rematch from a couple of months ago at Wrestle Rock, where Chanel Phoenix was actually successful in defeating Savannah Summers. So Chanel Phoenix has a 1-0 and zero record well, going I into this match. Didn't know that one, Angus, so I'm glad you brought that one up because that makes it a, a whole lot more interesting because obviously in the back of the mind, of, uh, of Savannah Summers and Chanel Phoenix. The, Chanel's had the, had the victory. Chanel does have the edge if you want to talk pure statistics. But look, you can't take anything away from Savannah Summers. We've seen her time and time again retain that championship. And look, as, as you've you know, mentioned in the past, one of the reasons Delta is no longer in the women's division. She was just fed up with Savannah Summers. And her cheating. And her cheating, exactly. <laughs> well, that too. Well, that's exactly right. We will see Delta in action. Big tag team action. Another one of our title matches tonight, Angus. What a night here at the top of the arc. I know. This is just the first of four huge championship matches. Oh, oh Chanel Phoenix over the top rope. To the outside. Oh, oh, big boot. Kicking right in the face of Savannah Summers. And now this match is sprawling to the outside, but bringing Savannah Summers back into well, the ring. Well, you can't wise. win the championship on the outside, Angus. You've got to get your opponent back in the ring. Yes, you do. Uh-oh, hold on, what is this? Around and around and around we go. Where will stop? Savannah Summers knows. Right there, sidewalk slam, just the two count. But getting closer already, uh, we've, we've said it before, you, you cover your opponents. It's not always you know you're going to get your three count, Angus. It makes your opponent kick out, wears them out, makes them use all that body strength. Mm -hmm. Expanding the energy, of and course. Chanel Phoenix getting closer and closer with that pin. Yeah, that's exactly it. Now, Chanel Phoenix, of course, uh, I spoke to her before this match. She has extensive jujitsu Muay Thai training, uh, representing absolute MMA in this match. Of course, uh, the dojo run by former Australian Olympic judo athlete Jake Andrew Arthur. And wrestler, of course. And wrestler, of course. So, yes, Chanel Phoenix has an extensive background in combat sports. Absolutely. And like I said, I've followed her on the social media. She's always working out, doing her weights, doing her core strength. So, uh, Chanel's got all the goods here. But look at that. Is that enough to withstand the offense of Savannah Summers? The ring general just using every part of the ring to inflict damage. Well, that, that's going to be the whole thing. We're, we're talking once again an 18, I don't know exactly how many years Savannah now. About 2006 she debuted in Riot City Wrestling. Oh. So that, that is every bit of 16 years ago now. So uh, so we've got that sort of experience behind Savannah Summers. Chanel Phoenix, I think, is only about, what, the four or five year mark? Yeah, they debuted 2015. And look at this, Wiley already. Oh. Debuted 2017, sorry, about five years ago. That's right. Yep. Big boot, Savannah Summers. Wow. That's right. So Savannah Summers has about 11 years' experience on Chanel Phoenix. Let's see how that plays out in this match. So it's all going to come down to the smarts versus the strength. Yeah, that's a great way of putting it. And, and hey, hold on. You cannot yeah, well, win with a choke. I mean, you can get yourself disqualified, but you're not going to win the match, Savannah. Well, you we should know, know that by now. Well, she does, and that's the whole thing. She knows if it's not going her way, get disqualified, because she might go home with the loser's purse, but she's still going home with the RCW championship. A, a very fair point. Very fair point. And look at this now. Shoulder charges in the corner. Just wearing Chanel down. And look, Chanel has not had a chance really to get into this one. It's been all Savannah Summers since the start. Oh, Savannah still on the attack. Got her with that forearm in the corner. I don't know whether you got time for showboating at the moment, Savannah. Oh, yes, exactly right. Chanel out of the way. Runs the ropes. Huge lariat there. Back elbow. Chanel just measuring these moves. Ducks underneath. German suplex. Wow. Takes it over just that pure strength that we talked about just moments ago, if, Angus. If I'm Savannah Summers, I'm staying down because look out for the knee. Could that be enough to put Savannah away? Could be. New champion. Hooks the legs. No. Not quite enough to get the job done. But getting ever so much more closer there, Angus, as you've seen the referee. Not too far off of that three count on that occasion. Absolutely. Chanel Phoenix could have almost been a new RCW Women's Champion.
Well, that would be uh, a big feather in the cap of Chanel Phoenix. I'm sure she'd quite happily head back to Melbourne. Oh, hold on now. Hold on. She calls this the rack attack. Can she hit it? Oh, oh no. Raking the ice. ice. Oh, code breaker. Wow. Out of nowhere. Savannah with the code breaker into the cover. Oh, she's oh, got Oh, that's her. it. That's three. Wow. Still women's champion. Well, Savannah Summers proven she can still get the job done. Well... Say smarts over strength in this one, Paul. Well, indeed, but that, uh, that code breaker was right on the money on that one, Angus, and uh, enough to put to Chanel Phoenix down for the three count. Very, very well thought out match here by Savannah Summers. Of course, you know, still the right seat wrestling women's champion. Who is going to take it off her? But I don't know whether we've seen the, the last, maybe, of Chanel Phoenix and, and the challenge against Savannah Summers. Look, I, I really hope not. I really hope we see see this match. Run, run it back, RCW management. If you're out there, run it back. Yeah. I'd love to see that one again. Absolutely. But successful here tonight. Top of the arc. Strike first. Strike hard. The RCW Women's Champion. The Princess of Perfection, Savannah Summers. That is absolutely correct. Now let's go back to Andy Anderson. Thank you so much. What a crowd, what a crowd. Thank, we really appreciate you guys coming out. It's, it's, it's fantastic. Thank you, thank you. The following match is scheduled for one fall. One fall! With a 15 minute time limit. Introducing first. Well, another debut coming up here, Paul Roberts. Big night of it all happening here tonight at the top of the arc, Angus. We're having four title matches. We're having people debut all over the place. Oh, all They're over the place. All over the place. This is, uh, of course, the Chief. Chief himself. Chief. He is Chief, and he will tell you to call him Chief. He also is known as Rig. Rig. That's right. All the way from Newcastle, South Australia. Representing Newly Pro over there. Oh, Newcastle, New South <laughs> Wales. Huh. Yes, that's right. Representing Newcastle Pro Wrestling. He is the Chief. He is Rig. He is also the man who has defeated Chris Basso. Whoa, hang on, hang about. That's right, Chris Basso went over to uh, New Pro. He came up short against Rig, and now Rig is coming here to see if he can go 2-0 and against RCW, oh. against Party Guy Tai. Yeah, I don't know if you've seen his post at all, but he was coming to stop the party here tonight at the top of the arc. Mm -hmm. And his opponent. And here we go, it's time to party at the arc. Very appropriate, as you said, this was once one of the hottest discos in South Australia. And I, I visited many times, I guess. Oh, that's, yeah, back in, the, back in the day, I can imagine. And a man who would have fit in perfectly, party guy tie. You sure about that? I think that is historically accurate way. Oh, okay. <laughs> anyway, here he comes, party guy tie. Came up short against Katie Trey last month at Trial by Storm. Did not walk away with the Emerald Crown, but look, he put up a lot of fight in that match. Yeah, well, also at, uh, at the Uni Bar, he had, had a shot of that Emerald Crown as well, so he's had a couple of good showings against Katie Trey for that uh, Emerald Crown, but unsuccessful. But he's got a big task on his hands tonight, because Rick is quite a big unit inside that square too. Yeah, that's right. We have uh, the pride of RCW on the shoulders. On the shoulders of Party Guy Tai. You well. need to get the win. You need to get some revenge for uh, world-class Chris Basso. Yeah, that's it. That's exactly right. Look, we are, you know, we're friendly with our interstate promotions, but I would uh, be remiss if I said that I didn't want RCW to, uh, of course to reign are. supreme. And look at this, Party Guy Tai now. He's trying to get rigged yeah, no, in the spirit. Yeah, no, I don't think you're going to get this, this man. Uh, oh, hold on. Rig is no nonsense. He does not want to partake Party Guy. Lasso. Uh, Rig's not having it. Wait. What? Or is he? No, 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 no. No. Come on, Rig. The Chief. What is Party Guy doing? What is, what is it doing? Oh, it's a headband. Party Guy with the neon pink headband. Uh, I don't you think Riggs are really going to go with a neon pink headband? Well, he's already wearing a very, very uh, fashionable white and red uh, headband, but is he? No, he's going to do it. He is! Rig with the pink headband. 
Hey, maybe he's a bit of a party guy himself. Oh, here we go. Oh, look at the moves. The moves are on. Oh. It was a ruse all along. I should have known someone called Chief Rig would not be into partying. Well, here we go. Party guy Ty uh, locked up in that side. Headlock tries to get Rig into the rope. Oh, you're not going to take down the big man. Look at this guy. Look at the rig on Rig. Now, of course, Rig is the master of what he calls the best cannonball ever. It's that corner sent on, and he says, no one has kicked out of me. But look at that drop kick there by Party Guy Ty. Oh, finally gets the glasses off, hands them to the referee. Oh, gets sent over the top rope to the outside. Here at the arc. Oh, shoulder block catches Rig. Party Guy flipping over the top now. Runs underneath the leg of Rig. Oh, huge inverted atomic drop. Ringing the bell. And cranking up the volume. Crank, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> cranking up the volume. The old nipple cripple, as they called it. Ah, oh, look at it. Ty getting ready to party. But a bit early for that. That was a great drop kick. Honestly, one of the best drop kicks in RCW. But one count. Too early to get the three on that occasion. This is the thing with Party Guy Ty. He's always partying. He's always dancing. I, I think it's oh, some kind of nerve. You see him when he turns up here at the start of the, the start of the day. He's dancing. We go home. He's dancing. He is. Will he be dancing after that spring? Oh! oh. Sent on drop there. I don't know. Well, well, Riggs got something to dance about right now, he reckons. Riggs got the moves. Oh, Looks like the village people moves, but that's... <laughs> well, they, they did have a chief in the village people, I think, didn't they? They did. Rig now with the strikes in the corner on Party Guy Tai. Softening up the middle there. Oh, just those boxing punches that follows up with that huge headbutt on Party Guy Tai. Staggers Party Guy right here at the oh, top of the arc. Oh, here comes the referee. You can't do that. You're using, using the middle rope. Can't choke him out like that. The middle rope to choke Party Guy Tai. Party Guy Tai's a sitting duck. Oh, hold on. What's Rig thinking now? Oh, hold on. Surely he's not going to try a 619. No way. No way. Well, here goes Rig off the ropes. No. Oh, oh yeah. come on now. Right to the back. I, I was keen to see if he could actually pull oh, that see off. see if he could do a 619. Oh, but he can't pull off that big belly to belly. Into the cover. Two. Oh, just the two. Not enough for the Chief to put away Party Guy Ty here at the top of the arc. Rig, he is composed. What is he doing? He's setting up Party Guy Ty now. It's the scoop. And... Oh, holding him up there for a long time. One hand. Oh, he's oh. doing a bit of a dance. The slam. Out partying Party Guy Ty. I thought, I, I never thought I'd see that. Come on, Party Guy. You're fighting for RCW here. Get your head in the game. Oh, here goes... Wow, what a vicious elbow drop there from Rig. Goes for the cover. Two. Oh, nope. Only a two count. And now... Into the sleeper hold. He got it cinched in. That is a well applied sleeper hold. Referee Nick Savage checking to see that that oh, arm doesn't yeah. slide into a choke. No, you've got to be careful for that. Well, uh, Party Guy's trying to get to his feet, trying to break that sleeper hold. I reckon he's got there. Oh, big knee there to the midsection. Come on, Party Guy! I'm Oh, Rick just had the monitor the audience now. Apparently not happy about hearing about Party Guy. Oh, here we go, the roll up. Oh, only a two count from the schoolboy. Party Guy off the ropes. Goes for the kick. No, oh, he gets caught. The strength of Rig. Oh, big fireman slam there. Once again, hooks that leg, goes for the cover. Not enough to put away the party here at the arc. There is still, still some fight in Party Guy tie. He's not ready to lie down just yet. But look, I, I'm very impressed with what I'm seeing from Rig so far. This guy is living up to his name. Oh, look, you can see why he may have been successful against world-class Chris Basso. Yeah, that's exactly right. He is just putting on a clinic now against Party Guy Ty. Hey, we've seen Party Guy in some big fights, but I don't think I've seen him in as much trouble as he is yeah, here. Quite getting manhandled like he is by Rig here tonight. Come on, Party Guy, get back into this. Look, normally I'm not... Oh! Normally, I'm not one to be too partisan, but when it's RCW versus Newey Pro, you know which side I'm picking. <laughs> well, I hope we all are. <laughs> one more! Rig signaling for one more. Here we go. Charges the corner. Party guy oh. up and over. Manages to get out of the way of that one. Oh, that double chop sends him down. Follows up with another. 
And there's a oh, big Insiguri kick. Yeah, right to the side of the head on that one. Party Guy is feeling it. Come on, don't waste too much time here, Party Guy. Big forearm in the corner. Get him with me, team! Oh, here we go, heading up. Right on the second rope there. Goes for the punches in the corner. Oh, no, not quite the 10. Wow! Oh, big spinning roundhouse there. And the stunner! Wow, lucky Rick didn't connect with that uh, spinning kick of his. Oh, just the two count off the stunner. Wow, I'm surprised Rick able to kick out of that stunner. Like, yeah, Party Guy nailed that one. Very, very well applied. Party Guy now, he's, he, you can see a little bit of confidence starting to show in Party Guy. You've still got to be thinking in the back of the mind though, what am I going to do to put this big guy away? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Rick is just, you know, he is a mountain of a man. Party Guy is cranking the arm up. Gets caught with the kick to the midsection now. Oh, Jackhammer! Big Jackhammer goes in for that cover, two. Oh, Rig now can't believe it. Rig's thinking, what is this guy made of? Party guy tight. As I said, made of tough stuff. I'm throwing him from pillar to post here at the top of the arc, and the guy still keeps kicking out. Hey, look, we saw Party Guy Tai withstand all that offense from Katie Tree at our last show, all the attack to the neck on the concrete, and he's still fighting, and he's fighting here tonight. Oh, he caught, catches him with a kick. The springboard disaster kick, is that enough? No, just the two count. Once again, Party Guy Tai trying to think what he can do, what he can, he's, he's throwing everything he can at Rig, but now he's thinking about going to the top rope. Is this a wise idea, Paul Roberts? Well, like I said, he's throwing everything he can at Rig. He's up on the top, Rig is oh. prone. Just messing with the lights there. Come on, Party Guy. Oh, no. Oh. Rig out of the way. Party Guy taking too much time. Nobody home. Oh, there it is. The spinning roundhouse. And now Party Guy is in the corner. Rig setting up for the best oh. cannibal ever. No one has kicked out of this pool. No wonder did you see the height. Come on, Party Guy. Kick out. You got on that. Kick out, Party Guy. Oh. No. Wow. No wonder they call it the best cannibal. Oh, best cannibal ever, absolutely. Rick. Now he's 2 0 against RCW. Someone needs to put a stop to Rick because he's uh, on a bit of a destruction line here with RCW. Stop this man. RCW management, stop this man. Seriously. Look, great match. Rick deserved that victory. But I'm just a little bit salty because RCW is now 0 2 against him. Yeah, well, obviously. Uh, and, and look, that starts to put him in a good position. He, he's beaten Chris Basso, he's beaten Party Guy Ty. Who knows what, next he'll be challenging for the Emerald Crown or the RCW Championship. Yeah, look, look, that, that could very well be in Riggs' future. But look, well done again, Party Guy Ty. Your day will come, I'm, I'm absolutely sure of it. Two really, really good performances, but just coming up a bit too big. Unfortunate for Party Guy Ty here. No more party in, in the arc for uh, Party Guy Ty. But I'm sure we'll see you dance around a bit later on. Hey, look, we'll, we'll keep the party up for Party Guy Ty soon. But look, big championship match coming up now. Ooh, I'm excited. Let's hand it back to Andy Anderson. The following match is scheduled for one fall. One fall. With a 60 minute time limit. And it's for the Riot City Wrestling Champion. Here we go. Here comes the challenger, the former RCW champion, the master of mayhem, having made his way. No Benjamin Rosenthal. No, we haven't seen him since the bridge. He's got, got super kicked. <laughs> Maybe time. he's still there somewhere. Well, I mean, I didn't see him leave the ring, but look, having former RCW champion held that title 237 days, very, very good outing. Came up short against Matt Hader back in Super Clutch 4 at the Adelaide Fringe. Now, cashing in his rematch. Yeah, that's right. The big rematch is going to happen here tonight at the top of the arc. RCW Championship on the line. Can Havoc regain his title? Well, that's the thing, that's what I'm wondering, that's what the residents of Riot City Wrestling are wondering. 
And look, we're getting this match before intermission. Both men just could not wait. And here comes Matt Hazel, RCW champion. We saw Chris Basso earlier in the night get the victory. And Matt Hayter make it 2-2 two and two in the World Class Eagles. Matt Hayden making his way. He likes, he likes to have his song makes, play out a little bit. He likes he? to make everyone <laughs> wait. But that's what makes him the official ego, isn't it? Building that anticipation. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here he comes. Not. Gonna make his wait a bit longer tonight. Come on, Hater. I want to see this title match, damn it. Well, obviously, the RCW champion, Matt Hater, playing mind games with the challenger Havoc here tonight. Well, it's his prerogative to make Havoc wait. Well, it's, it's probably working, you can see frustration on the face of Havoc. Remember, Havoc attacked Matt Hater at our last show. Maybe Matt Hater's getting a bit of revenge by making Havoc wait. I don't know. I'm sure he was here tonight. I'm sure he was oh, in the Arca bar. I've oh. seen him around earlier. Yeah. I've seen his merchandise. He's here. Well, the, so the music's now stopped. We've, we've got no Matt Hater. Right. Oh, hold on a second. Hang on a second. Oh, that's, that's the RCW champion. Wait, it's the cameraman. No, wait, the cameraman is Matt Hayter. Has he been there the whole time? I believe so. I didn't really notice Angus. No, I didn't notice either. Now the match hasn't even begun yet. And already, oh, oh, oh look at the momentum from Matt Hayter. Takes both men over the top rope to the outside wow. here on the floor. Matt Hayter is uh, he's coming in hot tonight. Big forearm now, straight to the back of Heavy. I get the feeling we are not going to see a conventional championship match here. Well, the bell hasn't even rung, Angus. Matt Hayter is not even in his gear. He's just wrestling in street clothes tonight. Think about the months of mind games and the months of assault that Havoc has laid into Matt Hayter over the past what, 12 months? Since the last time we were at the Arkabar? Well, this is where it all stems from. I mean, we've seen uh, Benjamin Rosenthal dressed as the cameraman, low-blowing Matt Hayter, having cashing in his key to the city and winning that RCW championship. That's right. Clearly, Matt Hayter, the last time he was the champion in the Arkabar, he lost the title. He's not taking any risks this time. And fair play to him. Look, it's his prerogative to do this. I think, I think it's smart. I think he's playing a very smart game here. Well, here he goes, hands the belt. The referee's called, called for the bell. Yeah, this it, one is officially underway. Yeah, it's an official match. Super kick, no, Havoc catches it. Wow, Havoc quickly back on the Oh, the attack but gets caught with that elbow. Oh, here we go. Oh, hold on. Havoc thinking package pile driver wow, now. Wow, if he hits this early, no. Hayter's not going to let it happen. Oh, satellite DDT hits. Havoc staggers, and now Hayter is kipping up. And the RCW champion on fire here tonight. Oh, look at this. He's going for the super kick. This could be it. Looking to make very quick work of Havoc tonight. If he hits this, it could all be over. Well, you're not getting paid by the minute, Angus. Oh, oh. wait. Referee, oh, that's a disqual... Call he's calling for the bell. That's a disqualification. Well, yeah, but you... Wow. What is Havoc doing here? Havoc, you just got yourself disqualified. What are you thinking? Well, obviously, Matt Hayter will retain his championship, winning by disqualification. Hold on, what is, it? What is that? Havoc's got something there. Havoc's into something in the corner. I can't you quite tell. By disqualification and still City Wrestling Champion, something? Matt Hayter! Sure, what's going on here with Havoc? Something's going through the mind. Of oh, hold on. Hang on a second. That, is, that, is that lighter fluid? I think. I, I, I think you're right. What, what, what is, is he? He just squirted it in the face of Matt Hayter. Come on, get someone out with here with water. Get get that out of Hayter's eyes. Seriously, that stuff can cause damage, real damage to the eyes. Referee, try, oh, referee's just caught the back elbow. No, from having. Oh, hang on. 
Havoc's just squirting lighter fluid all over Matt Hayter. That is just, that's too far, Havoc. What are you thinking? Wait, what is going no. through the mind here? No! Of Havoc. No, don't, no, 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 Surely no, 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 no. This is, this is beyond. Oh, thank, oh, the God. Oh, my God, thank God. Get, get him out of here. Get him. This is crazy. What is Havoc, what is going through the mind of Havoc here, Angus? This is unbelievable. He's doused the guy in lighter fluid. He's trying to put him on fire. This no. is I, look, I, I have seen it and I don't believe it. Seriously, Havoc, get get him out of here. Well, you, you can see the guys trying to get Havoc out of out of the ring, out of the. He's possessed. What is going on with Havoc? He gets himself disqualified. He's trying to put the guy on fire. This is not right, no, Angus. I know. I'm starting to think for Havoc, this is not about the RCW Championship anymore. Seriously, this is a man's life that we're talking about. He could have done serious permanent damage to Matt Hayter. Wow. This is not what RCW is about at all. Get, get him out of here. Seriously, get him out of here. Absolutely speechless at the moment. I, I, I've never, never seen anything like this. Well, well, clearly tonight, Havoc was not thinking about winning the RCW title. This was, this was about causing a serious and permanent end to Matt Hayter's career. And thank God... Thank God they intervened, but ah, I, I, uh. look, Angus, we, we'll get some help from from Matt Hayter, and look, I, I think we need to take a quick break right now. Yes, I think we do. Let's um, uh, yeah, let's 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 take take a quick break here. At first, it was about chaos, and I saw the potential for chaos already existing in Riot City. The lost souls of Amber and Baron. And lost they were. They had to be shown the way to find that chaos through means I never wanted. But in fighting them, they saw firsthand that I truly was what I said I was. A man of my word. I promised chaos, I delivered. I promised we'd turn Raya's city into a horror show. I delivered. I promised that together Riot City Wrestling would exist in our world and we have delivered because together we are the most dominating entities in this entire country. No one can stop us. No one can stand in our way. All that have tried have fallen before us. The brave yet foolish, the former champions, the current champions, they have all been left laying at our feet. What started out as chaos is now about domination. And no longer do lost souls exist in Riot City. Now Raya City exists in Purgatory. That's right, the show must go on for Roberts, and here we have Brady LTD, the number one contenders for the RCW Tag Team Championship. One of my favourite tag teams getting around right now, Angus. Uh, I haven't made it. Uh... You're a little bit biased when it comes <laughs> to these guys, I think, Paul, but look, I am too. I love these, I love this, this brother-sister tag team combination. Of course, making huge waves across uh, the country. We've seen them win the, the Tag Team Championship over in Future Wrestling Australia, FWA in Sydney. And of course, they're doing very well over in Nui Pro. We just saw a rig from Nui Pro. These guys 
have been wrestling there in the Tag Team Championship Tournament. Maybe one of these need to beat Rig. Maybe, yeah, look, Delta versus Rig. You know, I'd be interested in that. Brady versus Rig. But look, and here, here comes the team, the champions now. The temperature just dropped about 10 degrees here at the top of the arc, Angus. Oh, it always does when Purgatory is on the scene. Riot City Wrestling Tag Team Champions. And look, they won these titles about a month ago, back at Trial by Stone against Kings of Ruin. And I said it then, I'll say it here. Is there a team on this planet that can be Purgatory? Well, it, it's all very debatable to me. The Brady's may be the only one that have half a chance of doing that, Angus, but we will find out here tonight. But wow, what a team. What a tag team division RCW have at the moment. We've seen the Perea hold on to these titles forever. Seemed like forever. Or 55 days. Well, there you go. That's, that's forever in my books. And then at the end of 2021, the Kings of Ruin finally dethroned the Perea. First title defense in 2022. We see Purgatory take those titles away. And of course, Baron and Anar the Strange undefeated as a tag team. No one has pinned either of these men when they are teaming up together. They look, they defeated world-class egos back at the fringe. And Purgatory have a win over the Greens. Back at Reanimator second. And uh, Amber obviously in the corner with Anar and Baron and she could make a difference whether you like it or not, Angus. We have seen her make a difference on many, many occasions. Having that third person on the outside definitely changes the uh, the dynamic of the match. Well, here we are. The tag team champions, Purgatory, have made their way here to the arc. Let's uh, hand it over to Andy Anderson for the official announcement. Mm, good idea. I think Amber's looking at me. Jeez. Introducing first... Standing to my right, the challengers. Oh, hold on a sec. What's Amber doing? Oh, oh hang on. Come on, let Andy Anderson do the introduction. Hey, come on, this is. Well, at least the Brady's on attack, but no, quickly reversed by Purgatory. Oh, hold on. Oh, come on, there goes Amber. See, this is what I'm talking about, Angus. Look, already making herself known in this match, and now. Baron and Aina the Strange, two on one against Dean. Where did, where did Amber go? She just disappeared. She, look, this is the thing. She's out there one second, she's gone the next. I can't keep track of her. Well, Delta trying to locate Amber. Baron's heading to the outside. This match is officially underway. Baron coming in as the legal man. These, these two, Baron and Aina the Strange, they have had some wars. I, I remember their first, their first match, which was right here in the Archibar. And then that horror show at the RCW Academy. But now they are a team forged in blood and with Amber on the outside, Purgatory. And destroying Australian wrestling wherever they go right at the moment. Yeah, Purgatory really, really making some waves across Australia. Well, current RCW Tag Team Champions, as we said, beating the Kings of Ruin on their first title defense. That was unbelievable as it was, Angus. Yeah, it was a, it was a feel-good title reign that came to an end too short, in my opinion. And now, Aenar the Strange, Baron Amber Purgatory, dominant here in Riot oh, City Wrestling. Absolutely. And uh, as we said, it's going to be a big task for anyone to be able to take those RCW Tag Team titles away from Purgatory. But... The Bradys are here. They're going to have a shot at the top of the arc tonight. Look, the brother-sister team, they've got a lot of power, a lot of strength, and obviously got that brother, the sibling yeah, that connection, that, that, that train of thought. Synergy right there. But I don't know. Is, is that going to be enough? Is that going to be enough against Purgatory? Because right now... Probably not. I am seeing Anar the Strange standing over a fallen Dean Brady. Well, vitamin D... Dean Brady getting sent into that top turn by Bill. Delta trying to rally around her brother. Here he oh. comes. He's coming back with some fist there. But, oh. oh, headbutt. What is it going to tell you? Dean Brady unloading all those, those punches on Aina and then straight back to the Look at this. Look at the athleticism of Aina the Strange. And now on the outside, what is he thinking? Oh, big lariat there from the second row, taking Dean Brady down into the cover. Springs from the outside into the middle rope. Look, for a man of his size, that is incredibly impressive. Absolutely, Aina the Strange. 
has been impressive full stop since coming to the ranks of Riot City Wrestling. Look at that. Drawbreaker creates some separation. Eno is staggered in his corner. Makes the tag. Oh, there's the tag. In comes Delta. What can she do? Godzilla of the women's division now setting up on Eno the Strange and Baron. Whoa. Catch it. Baron asleep on the corner there. Oh, did you see that? It was a blind tag by Baron. Baron's tag. Oh, but a spear. Delta hasn't realized that Baron is the legal man. Uh oh. Oh, oh what? What the heck was that? Was that a drop a kick? Drop kick out of Baron. No way. The big man left his feet, drop kicking Delta. That's what we're talking about. The RCW Championship, Tag Championship on the line. Everything is going to happen. Yeah. Wow. I look. I'm still reeling about that drop kick from from Baron. A man who, a man, a monster who, who never leaves his feet. And right there, a drop kick. But Delta, she is trying to fight her way back in. Yeah, we, we know the heart, the determination of Delta. She's going to give it everything she can. Oh, this is not where you want to be if you're Delta. Oh, oh like a reverse oh. Alabama slam there. Right, face first into the mat goes Delta. Oh, that can break a nose if you don't land correctly on that. Oh. Now Baron tagging Aina the Strange back in. Well, Purgatory working as a well oil machine. Oh, flipping sent on there. Regular tags coming out of Purgatory, and that's exactly what we're talking about. They're, they're working as a well oil machine. And right watch this, now. Baron now over the oh. top rope. What is going on with Baron? What the, the change in Baron since being with Aina? Yeah, the the influence Aina has over Baron to, to get this out of out of the big monster is just it's eerie. It's, it's eerie to see what Baron is doing now. A man known, a monster known for his big, his big offense now, but he's, he's leaving his feet more often. Well, Delta able to kick out on that last one from Aina. Aina's now putting the pressure on the neck, on the arm, on that shoulder of Delta. Got her all locked up. Yeah, that is an awkward situation there. Hyper extending the elbow. Delta, she needs to work out of this one. You don't want to be caught in that too long. Oh, here comes Delta unloading those big right hands right at the midsection of Aina. Oh. oh, look at that. Gets him up with the shoulders. Yeah, five coming. No. Aina escapes that one. Oh, the low oh. bridge. Delta now takes Aina to the outside. Look, I've said it a million times, and I'll say it again, Angus. Delta, not only a rising, a rising female star in Australian wrestling, she is a rising star yes. in Australian wrestling. I agree 100%. And flipping out of that predicament. And here she goes. Can she get the tag to brother Dean? Dean coming in now. He's hot. He's ready. Oh, no. Oh, look out. Gets caught. But no, he's escaping it. There's the strength of Dean Brady. Oh, delayed German suplex to Baron. Wow. They're the sort of times that Baron doesn't like being off of his feet. Absolutely not. And right now, either does Aina just taking him down with that Uranagi from the corner. Oh, did Telta tag herself back in? I don't know, but here she comes on the outside. Oh, no. Tope Suicida and a spear. Whoa, don't blink in no. this one. Dean's still the legal man, goes for the cover. Dean, legal. Cover there on Aina. Two counts, says Nick Savage. Oh, here's Amber. Oh, look out. Amber's on the outside. Watch her. Watch out. Got to keep your eyes on her. That's the thing. We, we, we forgot her. We haven't mentioned yeah. her in some time, but she's been out there. Once she reappeared. Yeah. Oh, oh. The headbutt. I, I think Aina The Strange has the hardest head here in Riot City Wrestling. Well, absolutely. I won't. I won't argue the point right now, Angus. Just one headbutt. He's completely staggered, Dean. But Dean taking Aina to the outside. Enough in his mindset to get him to the outside. Both men with the the same idea, going for the hit at the same time. Oh, blocked by Dean, ramming Aina's head. There. I don't know if that's going to work too well. No, Aina doesn't seem to be too stag. Oh wait, hold on. Dean is going up onto the, the second rope. What is he Where's picking he? here? I don't know if this is going to work, Dean. I don't know. Don't, I don't know if it's... Oh, hold on a sec. Oh! Big wow. suplex from the outside in on Aina. Once again, the strength of Dean Brady. Delta getting to the corner. There's the tag. Delta. Uh-oh. Going up. Where's she up. going? High-risk offense here from Delta. Big moonsault. Into the cover. Two. Oh. 
Just wow. the two count. Just the two count. That's probably the closest Anar or Purgatory have been pinned in a long time. I can't believe I'm seeing this. The Brady's for a moment here on top. Oh! oh. But Dean running right into that big boot from Baron. And Delta, wow, the way she swung that right hand. Now off the ropes. Oh! oh sent sky high. And watch out for the Lariat. Wow. Baron just destroying Delta right there. Oh, two count. That was a close one. But not enough, Delta. Yeah, wow. That's resilience there to get yourself to kick out of that. Oh, this is not good for Delta. Watch out. Oh, oh look out. I think in the confusion, Baron hits I Ana. Don't, I don't know whether Baron can believe it. Baron is staggered. He doesn't know what to do. Maybe he knows the repercussions that are going to come from Ana. Yeah, that was really interesting there. Baron just staggered there while Ana was on the ground. Well, here comes Dean now. Double team from the Brady. Send Ana into the ropes. Oh, Wave Brain coming up. Oh, is that enough? Can they put him away Come quick on. before Baron's back? New champions. Here we go. New champions. Two. Oh. Oh, wow. Did you see the way Ana kicked out of that one? He, he, I, how did he kick out of that? That is their signature tag team move. That has put tag teams away. Well, you can see Amber starting to think the tag team titles were going to slip away. She was on that ring apron ready to pounce. They pinned the Perea with that move. Oh. oh. Just right to that, that mask of the monster. The high-low. Oh, Baron is down now. Is this enough? Oh, no, not going into Look the out. Well, here comes Aina. That's right. Is Aina the legal man? I believe Baron is the legal man. I'm losing track of the line on the... I believe it's Baron and Delta oh, are legal, oh. but I don't think that matters right, <laughs> right now. now. Look out, here goes Purgatory, looking for that double choke slam on the Brady. Oh, sending the Brady's right to Limbo. This could be it. Oh, wow. Only a two count this time. Can't believe it, the Brady's able to kick out of those choke slam. The double choke slams weren't enough. Now double team from Purgatory up on the shoulders. Oh, the wasteland taking Dean Brady down. Still going to put some more punishment. Here we go. He hits the Tombstone pile driver. This will be it. Purgatory surely re retain their tag team titles. Uh -oh. Hang on, they're not still still thinking. So is Delta legal or? Is... I don't think they're thinking that. Oh. I think they're wanting to put more damage, inflict more punishment to show that they are about domination. That's what Purgatory have said all along. They are about proving how dominant they are. And look at this now, setting up with a crucifix power bomb. Oh, folds Delta in half. Unbelievable strength and power there from Baron. Delta in. Oh, she gets her foot on the rope. Close enough to the rope. Wait a sec. Amber saw the foot on the rope, tried to get it off. The referee thankfully saw it in time. Oh, oh, he's. Yeah, get her out of here. Wow. She's been causing trouble on the outside this entire match. Get her out of here. Great call from Nick Savage. But Baron now is a bit showing some concern, I think, for the first time in this match. He doesn't oh. he doesn't want to see Amber get dejected. Oh, look out, Michael Kent could be in trouble here. Try, oh. Trying to remove Amber. And I'm wondering now how much Amber factored into the rest of Purgatory's plan. Now she's gone, what is Baron going to do? Oh, look at Delta oh. rolls up the big man. Three, we got new champs! What? New champions! Delta has just rolled up Baron! I can't believe it! I cannot believe it! Brady LTD, new tag team champions! Unbelievable right here at the top of the arc. What a night! The Brady's, Brady LTD have put away Purgatory on their first title defense. We have brand new tag team champions, Angus. Yeah, a Purgatory, believe it or not, are now the shortest reigning tag team champions in Riot City Wrestling history. Really, 29 days. That's that's crazy. I thought they would hold oh. on to those titles forever. Forever, yeah. Wow. Well, cannot be happier here tonight, Angus. We have brand new RCW tag team champions. The Brady's, Brady LTD. How good does that feel? Well done. Well done to the brother sister team. Truly, think about the, the, the wars they've been through this year. Purgatory at the fringe. That excruciating ladder match. 
Pereira at our last row. And now, the Riot City Wrestling Whoa. Tag Team Champions. But hold on. Oh, look at that. Oh, thank God. Thank here, God. Here I comes the Kings of Ruin. I don't know if my heart could have handled anything more than just a hug here. Well, there you go. There's four champions right in the middle of the ring here at the moment. Great to see. Great Kings to of see. Ruins realizing what a job the Bradys have done against Purgatory here tonight to take away those RCW Tag Team titles. Well, yeah, well earned. Well earned, Bradys. And look, after you know what we saw earlier with Matt Hayter, I, I'm just glad we could have this feel good moment here. Absolutely, the Brady's on top of the world, at the top of the arc. Yes. Right here. Tremendous. Tremendous outcome. But look. Oh, hang on. Oh. Ah. You know what? Yes, I would love to see this match. Well. Kings of Rune versus Brady's. And I'm sure the Brady's would quite happily. I think the residents want to see this one. I reckon that that will be a great match of Kings of Ruin versus Purgatory for the RCW Tag Team title. But that's not going to stop the celebrations here tonight at the top of the yard, Angus. This is unbelievable. We have brand new tag team champions. The tag team division in RCW, one of the hottest in the country right now, you'd have to say. Oh, I, I think it's undeniable you've got the Braves, Purgatory. Kings of Ruin, World Class Eagles, Perea, and I could keep going. Keep going on and on and on. Of course, Jet Shaw, who've got the key to the city. Yes, and look, are they going to... I look, I hope they don't come out in the next little second here, because seriously, oh, let the Bradys wow. soak up this victory. I do not yeah. want to see Jet Shaw challenge just yet. They do have that key. They do have the opportunity to challenge for a title shot at any time. But let's let the Bradys enjoy this moment. Let's let them celebrate yeah. with those tag team championships. Well earned. Let's let them head to the bar and have a drink as the brand new RCW Tag Team Champion, Brady LTD. What a shot there. What a shot of our new champions. I am, and I could not be more proud to call these two Tag Team Champions here in RCW. Absolutely. Wow. What a big victory. I, I can't believe it still. Yeah. I cannot believe I know. it. Purgatory in their first title wow. defense. Just Wow. Here we go. Back to Andy Anderson. The following match scheduled for one fall with a 15 minute time limit. Introducing first. Well, it's a night all about championships and debuts here for us. Oh, that's what we said it earlier, four big championship matches and probably four or more uh, debuts here tonight. Yeah, so of course, Snacks has been wrestling around Riot City Wrestling in tag team action. He competed at the uh, U-Bar show, Punk of Riot the tag match with Matt Hayter, but making his official singles debut here tonight, Paul. Absolutely. Well, yes, as you said, he's been around a little bit with RCW. E3 hasn't been a good friend of our, uh, our mate here, Snacks, but he's looking good at the moment. He had a bit of a test, as we said, at the uni bar with the RCW champion. They look quite good in tag team action, and uh, he's got the chance here tonight in singles against another debut. Another debut, but yes, yeah, Snacks, the most recent graduate of the RCW Academy. And, uh, you know, if he's anything to go by, look at the stars, the future stars we are making here, right here in Adelaide, South Australia. Here comes another debut. All the way from Sydney. Now that's uh, Sydney, New South Wales, not that's Sydney, right. South Australia. That's right. Yeah. I'll buy you on that. <laughs> The hot shot. Yes, I've been very impressed with what I've seen from Banjo Powers. He has uh, wrestled here uh, for a couple months in South Australia in, in various promotions, in various capacities, making his official debut here yeah. in Riot City Wrestling tonight. What do you know about this man, Paul Roberts? Well, as, uh, as you said, he's been floating around. He's residing here in Adelaide, South Australia at the moment from, uh, from Sydney. So uh, I've got to see him in action a few times. Very, very well schooled inside that squared circle, but... Sometimes his attitude uh, lets him down a little bit, let's just say. No, oh, one of those guys, isn't he? <laughs> but he's got a chance against Snacks here. Uh, and, uh, 
quite a bit of size difference between yeah. Snacks and Banjo Powers. Yeah, look at this. Look at the look at the height on Snacks. Wow. What a big boy we've got here. But that's not going to uh, determine Banjo Powers oh. and his ego in the slightest. Yeah, he calls himself the hot shot. He uh, considers himself, uh, you know, to be quite quite the uh, the wrestler. But look, I don't know. I don't know what, what we're going to see out of Snacks. I have actually never seen Snacks in one-on-one -on -one competition. And here we go with the lockup. Well, we're about to find out, Angus, as they lock it up. Snacks with the power and the, the size strength over Banjo, getting him back in the corner. Clean break from Snacks. Oh! Oh, just a bit of uh, You might be able to answer this one for me. Has Snacks got any sort of like, boxing background? Where in the he, he's an athlete. I know he's, I know he's got some experience in, uh, in AFL. Just look at the size of him. But I'm not sure about boxing or any other combat sports. check that out. All I know is when I see him, I want to say, send Snacks! Snacks. And send us some snacks too, please, if, yeah, anyone's, if anyone's listening. Anyone at the bar over there, drinks? Yeah, send snacks in the most literal sense possible. But here we go, snacks now. Looking to regroup here with Banjo Powers. Here we go. Up. Right in the middle of the ring here at the top of the arc. Banjo, like I said, with certainly the experience over snacks. Ooh, yes. And you can see it right there. Yes, Banjo Powers, I, I did, uh, I was talking to him a bit earlier. Did you know that he just got back from a residency training over in Mexico oh. with uh, former uh, Ring of Honor world champion Bandito in his gym over there in Mexico. Wow, that's a pretty big effort there from Banjo Powers. No wonder he's uh, now back here in Australia trying to make a, a name for him around the country. Yeah, trained in the Lucha Libre styles over there in Mexico. And, he, and, and it makes a lot of sense. The, the few times that I've seen this guy, the way he gets around the ring, he certainly, uh, certainly shows those attributes yeah, very, very quick on his feet, Banjo Powers. Very quick with the tongue as well. <laughs> Ooh, he respects Snacks. Did you shake Banjo Powers' hand? Definitely not. Oh, really? Oh. Well, look, I don't know him that well. <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe I would. Snacks. Now, yeah, sizing yeah, up Banjo. It, I'd be checking it out too, Snacks. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Nice, nice show of respect. Oh! Ah, oh. Snacks caught him though. Oh. Oh, beautiful. Oh, Takes him over. Northern Light Suplex from Snacks. Snacks, again, another one trained by Chris Basso at the RCW Academy. Oh, of course, you can, uh, we've got tryouts coming up soon, Angus. Yeah, we do. Tryouts June 12th. They're all on our socials. You can, you can be in the ring. You can be just like Snacks here. Yeah. Snacksy boy, but Banjo Powers powdering to the outside. And look, we've mentioned this too before. The more experienced wrestlers will do that. When they're in a situation where, you know, things are moving too quickly, they need a chance to regroup, they'll time go. Out. Yeah, they'll take the time out. But Snacks is, I, I see a lot of wrestlers make the mistake of rushing to the outside and then they get caught. But Snacks is taking his time. Yeah, he's inside smart, the ring. Smart move by Snacks, really. Let Banjo Powers come to you. Oh, 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 oh. we spoke too soon. Banjo catches Snacks. But, oh! oh Able to avoid the splash there from Snacks. Banjo. Gets out of the way. Here he comes, corner to corner. Up oh. and over. And blocks the whole big forearm, catches the jaw of Banjo Powers. Whoa, springboard axe handle. Snacks with the axe handle. Snacks and the axe. Snacks and the axe. Well, there's a tag team. But look, Snacks now has taken control of this one. Oh, come on. <laughs> Powers hanging on to, to referee Michael Ken. Oh, just catches a quick elbow there. Oh, the what jaw a jawbreaker. The jawbreaker, that's right. And now follows that up with a neckbreaker. Doing some real damage to the neck, the head of Snacks. Now Banjo Powers celebrating at the middle of the top of the arc. Yeah, I wouldn't do that if I were you. Watch out for this Snacks guy. He is big, he is quick. But obviously Banjo is uh, feeling very confident at this juncture. You obviously haven't talked to Banjo long enough. No, I try, <laughs> I try not to talk to people like Banjo for too long at a time. Oh, there you go. Banjo Powers. Yes, He's I just know. pointing at his name. It is written on the back of his tights. I do see that, Banjo. Thank you very much. And now the oh. hot shot with the slingshot. Just putting uh, the throat of Snacks across that rope. Yes. Into the cover, but Snacks able to kick out the back. And now this is where the experience comes into play. 
wearing Snacks down, bringing him down to the mat. Again, negating that obvious height advantage that Snacks has over Banjo. Well, that's it. Banjo trying to cut him down to size. Is that going to be enough, though? Because look at this. Snacks is working his way back up to that vertical basis. Yeah, Snacks is showing some great stuff here tonight. Mm. Uh oh, but he's caught. Big back suplex. Banjo. Banjo knows counters to all of Snacks holds, it seems. Well, that just comes with the experience that, that Banjo Powers has over Snacks. Mm. And look, early days for Snacks. He's got a long way to go in this game. He's only just starting his, uh, his journey here at Riot City Wrestling. Yeah, just beginning his career. And look, I already in what I've seen here tonight, I think he's a very promising young man. Only way is up from here for Snacks. But here he comes all the way across the ring, misses that one. Banjo now with those big strike kicks right to the chest, taking the wind of Snacks out. Wow! Ooh, bulldog variation there from Banjo. Only a two count. Wow, two and a half on that occasion for Banjo Power starting to wear away the young Snacks. That's it, Snacks is taken out into very, very deep waters at this point. I don't know, like you can train all you want in the in the gym, in the ring, in training, but when you're in a match, you've got to think, you've got to plan, what do you do when you're in this situation? Oh, it's a whole different ball game when you're inside that squared circle in a match, Angus, and, and, as you said, it's just not like training. Training, you go through your paces and all that, but anything can change inside that ring in like a this split now. second. Yeah, roll up by Snacks. And dodges that back elbow, counters with the Irish whip. Oh, leapfrog. Oh, a jumping high kick. Can that be enough? Is that enough? Two, it is. Three, he's caught him. Snacks wow. with the victory in his debut. What a debut here for young Snacks. Snacks gets the win over Banjo Powers. Very impressive. Wow. Very good showing by Snacks. Look, he didn't get flustered. He didn't break concentration. He kept focus and he hit that high kick and he got the three. Well, once again, it only shows the training put in by the guys here at RCW. As we said earlier with Caden Cornell against Chris Basso himself. Surely Chris Basso sitting back watching this one and, and surely got to be happy with how Snacks did inside that squared circle against someone like Banjo Powers. Yeah, someone as, as well travelled as Banjo Powers. And I'm very, very, very excited to see what happens next with Snacks. This guy exuding confidence right now. And why wouldn't you? Debut match here at Riot City Wrestling in the top of the arc, and get, you get a win. How good is that? Well, it, it doesn't get any better, but we're talking about getting any better. We're heading into the big one, our main event here tonight. Angus, once again, another championship match. The Emerald Crown is up for grabs. Here we go. mission, a mission to become the first ever Grand Slam champion here in Riot City Wrestling. Now, Paul Roberts, we've talked about this before. What exactly is the Grand Slam championship here in Riot City Wrestling? How do we define a Grand Slam? Well, that's hanging on to every title that you can here at Riot City Wrestling now, of course. We know he is the champ champ. He's held the RCW championship. He has been the RCW Tag Team Champion. Once he holds on to that Emerald Crown, he will become the first Grand Slam Champion. That is right, but standing in his way are two very, very tough opponents. Of course, no shortage of confidence here on Nick Armstrong, but look, this is going to be a tough ask if you're going to make history. Well, 
spot is going to be a huge ask, but uh, the biggest thing is going to be the, the triple threat factor for Katie Trey. Yeah, that's right. Biggest challenge of his career to date, I would actually ascertain. The champ champ, uh, you know, he's been around the top for a while. He's been in his fair share of triple threat matches. I'm sure he's coming into this one with a very good game plan. Let's see how he goes. Katie Trey has had some uh, challenges since getting that Emerald Crown. Uh, yeah, let's say the circumstances uh, could be interesting, but dubious circumstances, yes. as I like to say. And now, nothing better than this right now. I, yes. I, I get I get chills every time I hear this music. I am I don't think I'm ever going to get sick of this. The Viking Grim. He's in contention tonight for the Riot City Wrestling Emerald Crown. And look, he didn't say it, but he's another man who is also in contention yeah. to be a Grand Slam champion, former four-time Riot City Wrestling champion, former Riot City Wrestling Tag Team champion as part of Gods and Monsters with Big Rocky Marshall. And another man tonight with history making on the mind. Well, you talked about uh, people with uh, strength, determination, everything. This guy... Shows all of that and more. We know the fight that Grimm's had over the last couple of years. Everything that this man has gone through has led him here tonight to the RCW Emerald Crown. And look, I, I don't normally pick favorites in matches, but if I was going to pick favorites oh. tonight, I would love to see Grimm walk away with that. Well, any one of these three men can possibly do it tonight, but there's one man we all want to see do it here tonight. What, what a story. What a story that would be. To come back. From, from the difficulties and the challenges he's faced with cancer, to come back, return to the fringe, return to singles action, and win the Emerald Crown. That would just be a story that I would, I would tell people for years to come. Great to see here tonight. But we know what that cage dog is capable of. Yes, you cannot ever overlook the dog. Here he comes. Say it again, Paul. Oh, uh, KD Trey, crossbreed, whatever you want to call him. I will call him Chen because he is the current holder of the RCW Emerald Crown. And look, Whoa. this is a tough contest for him. Like he said it before, he said he will do whatever it takes to hold on to that Emerald Crown. But look, in a situation like this where there's no count outs, no disqualifications, you're going to have to win if you're going to be Emerald Crown champion tomorrow. And he doesn't even have to be hidden or submitted to lose his title. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's the, the champion's advantage just evaporates when we're a triple premier. And I, I, you know, RCW management, they, they decided at that last event to have two Emerald Crown qualifiers. I wonder if this was as a test to Katie Trey to see whether or not he could call himself Emerald Crown champion by winning through official means. But look, we will find out tonight, three men Challenging for that Emerald Crown. Let's see. Let's throw it down to Andy Anderson. Introducing first, standing to my right, weighing in at 90 kilograms, he is a three time former Riot City Wrestling Champion, the self proclaimed champ, champ, Nick Armstrong. Standing to my left, representing gods and monsters, weighing in at 112 kilograms, he is a Viking! And their opponent. Standing directly in front of me. Weighing in at 94 kilograms. And holding the Riot City Wrestling Emerald Crown. The about this one, he is not showing it at all. 
very confident is the deal. Big, big task on his hands. Triple threat rules at the top of the arc. Oh, stop it. Oh, no. God, take that belt away that, from him. That takes uh, loving the championship to a whole another level. And there we go. The championship handed to Michael King. Could that be the last time Katie Train lays his hands in the end of the ring? Very possible here tonight. We're about to find out as our main event for Strike First Strike Hard gets underway. And look, what a show we've had. What a history-making show we've had. And to cap it all off with the Emerald Crown feels very appropriate. And here we go. You can see the timer yeah. on the screen. 15-minute time limit, Paul Roberts. Always a 15-minute time limit in these Emerald Crown matches. What a way to finish off this one here at the arc. 15 minutes, one of these three men will leave the arc as the Emerald Crown holder. And look at this, look at that war path that Grimm is on right now. He's just destroying these oh, guys. Going for a pin on both, Kitno. Uh, wow, already. Could have been going home early, Angus. Oh, less than 30 seconds. Wait, oh, yeah, look, I'm not going home after this. We're at the top of the arc. Hey. I'm partying all night long. And yes, I know it is a Sunday night, but here we go. That's all right. A chop, no, denied. Oh. And Katie Trey, that lariat there in the corner. Yeah, big like the old days where we used to go all night and go to work the next day. Why not? And if you're any one of these men who win tonight, I wouldn't blame you if you did the same thing. But this is interesting now. Hold on. Oh, big double clothesline out of Grimm, taking him down. Well, did you see that? For a moment, it looked like Katie Trey and Nick Armstrong were working together, but not anymore. And here we go. Oh, a big chop from Matt Grimm Bassett. We know all about the basso chops. Here he goes, sends Katie across the ring. Oh, look out. Nick oh. Armstrong just takes the feet from under Grimm. Oh, maybe the Alliance is back. Look at this. They're working, well, working together to, to isolate Grimm. Is that going to be a plan there, Angus? Look, these two guys could work together, take out Grimm, and then it becomes a one-on-one -on -one match. Yeah, well, look, if you're talking strategy, you'd much rather work against one man than against two. So look, if, if that's what uh, Katie Trey and uh, Nick Armstrong have decided, then look, that's their prerogative. But right now, Grimm is just getting absolutely decimated on the outside. Yeah, we're just sending him into that steel post. You can see the, the marks on the back of Grimm. Yeah, look at that red welt there starting to show. And now the champ champ and Katie Trey on attack of the Viking. Oh, right into the apron there. Sending him back. Right into that steel post along the ring apron. Yeah, back and kidnap first, right into that ring apron. That is the hardest part of the ring, ladies and gentlemen. That, you know, that's just steel right there. That is Absolutely. just a steel girder that keeps the ring together. Oh, oh. just like the steel post. Yeah, the steel post. Oh, jeez. Grim has not really had a chance to fight back. It's been two on one this entire time. Yeah, well, like I said, that, that could be the disadvantage for Grim here tonight. Obviously, the champ, champ, Nick Armstrong, Katie Trey have decided to somewhat put an alliance together to see if they can chop Big Grimm down. Yeah, clearly found some common ground in their disdain for Grimm. Oh. Grimm trying to battle out of that one, but big strike again. He's trying the resonance of rallying behind Grimm, but I don't think it's enough. And, and look at this. Just the, the, the double teams. That, unfortunately, you can't play the numbers game, Angus. You can't do it. No, you can't. Two will always beat one, I'm afraid. Especially here with Katie Trey and Nick Armstrong. And now rolling Grimm back into the ring. And, and just continuing that attack. The double team. And look, I'm... And a, there's no tag in. There's no nothing. There, there's no counts. They, they can do this for as long as they like, yeah, Angus. Yeah, all perfectly legal. But look, I, I'm just looking out of the corner of my eye. That clock is ticking. We're well, down to 11 and a half minutes here. Yeah, and look, if these two guys mess around too long... Yeah, hold on. Wait a sec. A cover. Ah, broken. Now, here we go. This is going to change the game. Katie Trey won't put up for this. No, absolutely not. He is wanting to walk out still as the Emerald Crown holder. And look, here we there go. There he goes. Rolls up. Ooh. Good count there, but not enough. And look, no honor among thieves, as they say. I don't. Uh, Nick, you tried pinning Grimm before. I don't think you've got much to complain about. And here we go. I think the slugfest now between Armstrong and Trey. Oh. oh. I was about to say, I, I think that union has now disbanded and Grimm has found an opportunity to take control. Grim now back on the attack. Grabbing Katie Trey, bringing him back in the hard way. Oh, echoes of Dean Brady earlier. 
flinging Katie Trey from the outside back in. Oh, big right hand drops Armstrong now. Trey back and forth. Oh, that chop of Graham. You can see the damage it did to Armstrong. There we go, Trey sent across the ring into Armstrong. Here comes the Viking. Oh, big forearm in the corner of both men. I think that one hit both men. Graham picks him up, sidewalk slam to Trey. Grim is a house on fire, and he knows. Hold on. Oh, right across the knee. He knows he has to do this. He has to separate both men if he's going to have a chance of winning here. Yeah, Grim with that big two to well backbreaker on Nick Armstrong. He's now waiting for Armstrong to get to his feet. Katie's on the outside. Yeah, that's not, not where you want to be. Not a good place to be when you're the champ in this sort of match. Oh, going for that spider kick. Oh, oh the cutter! No, Armstrong cutter already. What? Oh, Trey's going to pick up the pieces. Picking up the scraps here. Is that enough? Two. Oh. Wow, just at the last moment, Grimm able to get that shoulder up. Katie Trey. I can't believe it. He thought that the, the, the Nick's, Nick Armstrong cutter was enough yeah. to put away Grimm. Putting a lot of faith in that Nick Armstrong cutter. Of course, Nick Armstrong recently pinning James Cray with that exact move to qualify for this match. Katie Trey laying it into Grimm. Trying to get back on top of the Viking. Now Katie Trey picking him up. This is good. There's only two people in the oh. ring now. Katie Trey has a legitimate chance here, but Grimm up on the shoulders of Katie Trey. Oh, Grimm able to get those elbows, that shots to the side of the head. Now sends him off the ropes. Oh, big. Was that a single hand choke slam there? Is that enough? Oh, don't forget about the man on the outside. Yeah, absolutely, Nick Armstrong making sure that wasn't a three count, but the clock is ticking away, Angus. We're like eight and a half minutes to go. Eight and a half minutes to go, that's right. Nick Armstrong saving this one momentarily, but he gets caught on the apron here by Grimm. And what is Grimm thinking as he ascends where, that yeah, second where's rope? where's Grimm going? He's on the, on the second rope now. Nick Armstrong on the apron. Oh! Oh, the strength of Grimm! He's hoisting Nick Armstrong up in that choke. And drops him down. Wow. All the way to the floor here. Oh, watch. Oh, look out. Watch out for Katie Trey. Green with his concentration on Nick Armstrong. Gets caught up in that top rope now. Katie Trey. He's in that tree of woe. Oh, here we go. Oh, big boot to the side of the head. Big paintbrush boot to the side of the face of Grimm. Look out, Armstrong now back in. Uh-oh, Armstrong thinking sharpshooter. There we go. Oh, he's got it locked in. Oh, that's deep. Right in the middle of the ring. That is a perfectly executed sharpshooter. Trey's got a long way to go to get, he's trying to get to those ropes. Can he, no. Oh, Armstrong able to drag him back. Back into the center of the ring. That's gonna seem like miles away oh, from now. And look at this, he's wrenching back. Nick is wrenching back. Can Katie Trace? He's got it sunk in deep. Can he withstand, hold on. Grim, there's some signs of life at Grim. He has to free himself and he does and he breaks. Oh. The sharpshooter, thwarting Nick Armstrong's attempts there. Yeah, well, Grimm could see that, that, that emerald crown fading away. We're looking through his hands We're there. We're under seven minutes. We're well under halfway through this match. No, the choke slam, not enough. Oh, oh! the spider kick. Oh, no, Katie Trey. Force fed, no, oh! denied. Here we go. Big choke slam out of Grimm. Goes for the. Goes no, Nick Armstrong now. Throws Grimm out of the ring. Goes for the cover. No, he gets rolled up. Oh, package two. Why no? Still champion. Wow. Katie Trey. Somehow, out of nowhere, small package on Nick Armstrong and retains the Emerald Crown. Still holder of the Emerald Crown. I can't believe it. Wow, of all the titles that could have changed hands tonight, this one, the deck was most certainly stacked against Katie Trey. But he came down. Oh, no, hold on. Wow, Nick Armstrong, wow. Not obviously happy about the result here tonight for the Emerald Crown. No, can you blame him? Losing by that small package. Yeah, he had. He thought he had that match won, but no. 
80. Trey out of nowhere able to uh, retain the Emerald Crown. And look, look at, come on Armstrong, this is not called for That's against right. Trey. After a hard fought match like that, Kenny Trey, you know, he won fair and square, let him celebrate. Oh, here comes Grim though. Grim has other plans for Nick Armstrong. Oh. Oh, choke slam. What goes up must come down. And I think Grimm is thinking, hey, I wasn't pinned in this one. Katie Trey getting out of dodge. Doesn't matter. He's still yeah. the holder of the Emerald Crown. Absolutely. Well, there we have it. He's going to uh, leave the Arkabar. The top of the arc. And he's going to run down the stairs, get back on Glen Osmond Road, and hightail it out of here, I think. With the Emerald Crown. Still intact. Well, the rain continues for Katie Trey. What can you say? The rain continues. He lives to fight another day. And no Grand Slam champion here tonight. Well, not tonight, but. Look, this is the first time I've actually been able to talk to you guys since coming back. And I just got to say, knowing where I was a year ago, knowing I might not even get a chance to be back in here, going from there to where I am now, and hearing you guys performing in front of you guys, I just needed to say a very big, Thank you to you all. Whether you guys know it or not, all of you guys here and countless others that aren't here, you all helped me in your own way. You all helped me get back to being able to stand in this ring again. So thank you. same man that I was a couple of years ago and uh, <laughs> look being honest I've still got side effects that are kicking my ass every day and it's a struggle sometimes and you have good days and bad days My head's definitely a lot colder. It looks a lot better. But although tonight didn't go the way we'd hoped, I promise you guys that as long as you guys have me, and as long as the guys out there will have me, I won't give up. I will keep trying. I will keep fighting, clawing my way every day back to the top i will be a winner i will be someone that my family will be proud of and one day i'm going to be standing again in this ring arm up high with a belt around my waist And say it with me here. Raise your horns! What a night we've had here at the top of the arc, Angus. Unbelievable. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming out, checking out. Riot City Wrestling strike first, strike hard at the top of the Arkabar. I am the real voice of Australian wrestling for Angus R. Dacey. Have a good one. We will catch you next time. Farewell for now, but not.